composure. They lost the composure. I mean, they do. They did manage to get a short little break. So hopefully they huddled up together and understood what was the problem on hand in game number one. As such, they are definitely or probably would want to fix that up for game number two as we jump into the drafting phase with wow, the Belojski okay. special yeah, they, they band have to this. by RSGPH. They, they, they definitely have to respect this uh, a little bit better here. But again, Geek Fam game one, they banned off all the assassins here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see RSGPH prioritize assassins for Irat right from the get-go before Geek Fam kind of sets the tempo. But even then, I don't think it was that big of a deal because game one, you know, RSGPH, they were just still owning the early game. They were really, really only in the early game. They just made one mistake which kind of lost them the entire tempo. Was it just the catch factor coming in from RSGPH that just didn't really quite work out for them? Still I mean, we're looking 20. at a Grok Rome coming in from uh, from their side. And understandably, when... Uh, I've always talked about this before, right? Whenever you have a Grok Rome, you would kind of require teams that is able to catch up mm -hmm. to the Grok's momentum, the Grok's mobility, especially if you flick a wild charge. In this case, there's only probably two heroes that can kind of catch up to you. If you add in a flicker, there will be three three from the yep. Terizla, right? Yep. Julian, Roger, 100%, they can catch up. Yep. But when it comes down to Aqua playing as a Zask, oh. that might actually make things a little bit difficult. Is it really just light being way too far for that kind of uh, setup? I personally think it wasn't because of light being way too far. It was because of RSGPH being way too far. Yeah. There oh, were yeah, way yeah, yeah. too many fights where they were out in the map or even trying to force things when they didn't have to. Again, I highlighted this multiple times during game one. Desperation. They can turn off the lights, just wait for that to be over before you full commit. Yet RSG no. just decided to jump into what could potentially be the Arctic every single time. Yeah, it was a very difficult spot here because they have to group up together because they're afraid of the Dark Knight's fall. Right. But if they don't group up, they get picked apart by by everyone. It's kind they, of a situation where it's like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. If, if you stick, you're going to get caught by the Aurora. Down. If you split, you're going to get caught by Oloiski. Yeah. But if you decide to stick, which they did, they got out mac macro with Kadera just forcing on the back, uh, the, on the side lanes. Let's and not forget about Frigid Frost too. Exactly. Yeah. So in this time, they ban off the Moskov, denying away that global presence allows RGPH, or maybe even in this case, force Geek Fam to kind of group up as five and take a 5v5 fight in favor of RGPH's playstyle. Okay, true. So at this point in time, we have got three heroes that's already been picked with RSGPH getting themselves Haref. Geek Fam still back onto the Zask and of course with the Roger. Back to the same question again. Whenever we have a Zask, it is aerial denial or in this case, cl uh, land cl claiming lands, right? We're yeah. claiming lands, free real estate, all just for the uh, for the Zask. So at least for Geek Fam, they knew the answer oh, and that nice. is the answer of Beloisky special. But what do RSGPH have for themselves? Smart, smart. This time RSGPH, they, they take away, the, they, they, they are going to be playing the global presence a little bit better now, forcing Geek Fam to pull in Beloisky to force him to play either defensively or aggressively. And what I mean by defensively or aggressive is going to be the Angela. And in this case, forcing him to play Angela means that you are going to lose that Beloisky special. And I don't know, I have this secret feeling that they might play a Silvana role for Geek Fam. Silvana? Oh, but really? It's hard. That's it's a really, really hard to that play. That seems kind of out of left field. Yeah, You're yeah. Gonna that need was to explain a really huge leap. Care to explain? Okay, so just because of how their team's play style no work around, right? Uh -huh. They want Bloiski to be playmakers. Silvana is a very, very annoying role to deal with, which, again, kind of works like a kind of an assassin, right? Pre-level 4, you deal a lot of damage early on. And they want to kind of snowball into that. But again, like I said, if you go for that, Global Presence, you are going to lose out. You know, like Split Push is not that great. Is Global well. Presence really the name of the game? Uh, it can be, but it doesn't have to be either. Like, I get where you're coming from, Terrence. Like, if you have a Loi on the opposite side, you'd usually want something like a chip to counter it. Yeah. Chip is banned, so maybe something like the Angela, so that you at least yeah. have some presence there, right? You're but I don't think it ha necessarily has to be the case, as long as you have ways of scouting out, mm -hmm. like brushes mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Which they do. They have Vaxia now, they have Zask. It's not difficult for them to make sure that like there isn't a diversion play happening somewhere else. Game. They just got to make sure they can match it macro. So the question is, why did Beloisky choose, or rather chose, 
Hellcut as his special? What makes him? What makes this Hellcut work for him? Very simple. You look at Boloisky. Uh huh. Okay. You look at his face. <laughs> okay. You, do, do, you, do you see his face? <laughs> yeah. If you stare at him long enough, uh huh. You will see darkness. That's why Hellcut. Okay, so so <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, will we be able to emulate that onto some other? Heroes? Well, it happened in game one, but uh, okay, game two. I I don't know. I feel like he's known for his annoying uh, aggression, right? His yep. push, his ratty compositions here. It's if you give him another ratty role. composition, it isn't too bad. <laughs> But again, I haven't seen him play Natalia for a very long time. Oh, that yeah, is true. I'm, I'm thinking completely out of the oh, box. Oh, it's not gonna be even Natalia. Yeah, okay. I, I really wanted to see some kind of very interesting flex coming in from GeekFam. I mean, we have been seeing Zask all the way as a mid. I, I don't know, you, you told me that we got, I gotta throw all common sense away. Yeah. There could be a chance that Zas just suddenly become the uh, become the Roma, <laughs> that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm preparing myself. I don't think so. I'm preparing Not myself. This time. We, Not we already this time, have no. a Franco, which yeah. we haven't seen a Franco in quite a while. Very but really but he plays this a lot though, mm -hmm. in ID. He plays this a lot but as they, a safety. They, they now have the lockdown and the answer to a very annoying Harif. But the question is always gonna be if whether this big chonky man is able to run up to a slippery Harif. Yeah, the big... Oh, Lance! Lance. Irad Lancelot! Now that's quite interesting it's here. It's been a while. Have uh, Geekfam banned out for assassins <laughs> once again. So Interestingly enough, I think Julian was still questions. open, but they decided to go for Lance instead, mm -hmm. just to have a hero that's a little harder to lock down on top of Ruby. Ruby so, Lance. Very good ways of cancelling the CC coming in from a Geek Fam. And and wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, this Masha is still EXP. within... Masha EXP is still a thing. I okay. mean, you can definitely still do that. Okay, if we were to play towards GeekFam's usual playstyle and comfort picks here, I, I talk about give and take, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, instead of Beloisky being the annoying one, now you've got a Masha who's the annoying one. In this case, ah. XP's got to be flexible XP's a little bit XP's going to be the one that does that now. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a Franco XP, but... No, no, yeah. no. no. Most likely, it is going to be a Masha. And I think that that would be a huge throw if they were to do that. True, true. Yeah, but to be Franco. <laughs> <laughs> to be Frank. No, wow, wow. I, I see that, pun lord. I see that. <laughs> this is off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen, as we are jumping in to the land of dawn here. Uh, game number two between Geekfam ID versus RSGPH. I, I excuse myself and bring in back to Icy Baby and Sadafa. Thank you so much, Abstract here. We are going to be jumping straight into game here. Will this be a redemption for RSGPH? Or will GeekFam cheese their way to victory? Because this is going to be game two between RSGPH versus GeekFam ID. Uh, will Maloisky be able to recreate the same success we saw earlier? Because Hellcurt was very, very annoying. But now he doesn't have access to that. He does have a great hook though. So it's going to be interesting to see whether GeekFam can make use of that overall. Because normally you would want your Roamer to have a good amount of AoE, right? Against Aloyi. And Franco is not that. Yeah, and uh, well, as soon as we said that the hook didn't really commit to this well, Aqua preemptively used the flicker to kind of back out to safety. So that's going to be a little bit of win points coming Ooh. from in here. But look at this, Iran getting very aggressive here, almost taking our boy down. So they is going to be able to back off for now. Another hook attempt coming from Boloisky, not connecting here. Nothing super crazy yet, but we do see attempts being made so far from both sides. One of these is going to land eventually, and it is going to be very exciting when it does. But until it does, it means that GeekFam is not going to have a lot of that early game pressure. There were good movements earlier from both Aqua and Aboy to make sure they weren't easily picked off from ganks. So the game is still going to be proceeding without too much action. Well, speaking of action here, who say? Oh no, he's taking a little bit too much damage there. Cadera overcommits a little bit here. He's looking, trying to Ouch. go in for the finish there, but he's in a little bit trouble. Sidesteps his way through, but somehow he wins his gold lane for a little bit. Meanwhile, mill lane here, first one in the hands of Aqua. RSGPH, they got the kill, and now here it comes. Divergent comes in right behind the back lines of Vincent. They are going to take the turtle and take the kill. Instantly getting for a two for one special. In this case, a bang for a buck. Buy one, free one special. 
And that's always going to be the scary part of playing against a Luoyi. You never know where the diversion could show up. They used it to get behind Vincent, but they could have just as easily used it to gank Kadera up top. So there's always needs to be a way for Geek fans to make sure they know where Aqua is going. And I'm not sure if they're going to have the resources to do so, especially with RSG feeling more comfortable now, even able to get that first blood in the mid lane. Well, speaking of uh, first blood right now, because Geek fam, this, this feels like a repeat from game one, right? Like, RGPH, they, they were dominating the early game here. They're getting so much playing control and everything. It comes down to Beloisky making more space. But this time, Geek Fan forced to play default there. It's, it's going to be a lot more pressure on Gobs to actually make this place on this Masha. And so far, as you can see, Masha is actually struggling against Nebo right now. It is to be expected somewhat here. Masha early game is not all that good. And Ruby is able to regen a lot of the poke that comes out anyway. Alright, he has been teleported up here. Kadera, luckily, not gonna play too aggro. I think he realizes something is amiss. Well, in this case, uh, Vincent gonna continue their default plan here. Give him just a bit abiding for time for now, but economy swing wise, RGPH is starting to lead. Barely 4 minutes of the game, they are 1k ahead and it may not be a big amount but considering that this is the early game, that is pretty huge for RSGPH. We already know how important it is for this team to be able to snowball off that early game so this start is already great for them. Especially this time as well, Geekfam doesn't have a hero like Moskov to be able to fall back to, right? Their goal lane is Roger, who scales pretty well in damage, but nowhere near to the level of a Moskov. Oh no, here he comes. They go in for the fight as well. Boloyski gonna be first to fall. Vincent tries to buy a little bit more time here. We've got the Dominus Descent coming in, but they are able to trade only Aqua for Boloyski. So as of yet, Geekfam, they're very happy with this trade. Nibor trying to extend the fight, but look at this, the Nightmare spawn is just so annoying. And finally, Gobs joins the fight, but he's all by himself. He can't seem to finish off lights, but he's down towards two bars. He's gonna try and fight Iran. Iran, he needs to get out, Ooh. and he's gonna die. They secure the turtle for Geekfam as well as getting a kill on Iran. RSGPH now, they're gonna try and extend the fight, but Lois he saves our boy's life with the hook, but does he get out? No, he does not, but he forces Nibor to commit, and because of this, does he get punished? Gops, he's trying to do a lot Ooh, more the damage, hook. but the hook for Boloisky continues! Aqua respawn, rejoins the fight, and says, no, Geek Fam, no more for you! I think Geekfam could have afforded to leave that fight a little bit earlier because they were actually winning out quite handily there with Gobs being able to get Irad and the turtle in one fell swoop. Unfortunately, they forgot about Aqua's presence. Loi does a lot more damage than just TPing people around. So if not for that, that would have been 100% Geekfam victory. Oh, they overextended their stay by a lot. And now with the Diverge coming in, I, I think the spawn... Links coming in from the Zaz actually scouted that Divergent play. And Geek Fam, they're just once again playing very safe here, not knowing where the rest of RGPH are. Vincent now getting caught up by two men. Stun, I'm offended, connects until they get completely blasted by Aqua. RSGPH continuing to go in for the catch. Kadera stuck under the turret. He's gonna get pulled back, but does he survive? No, he does not. Light will finish him off. And the global presence of RGPH starting to crack into the defense of Geek Fam right now. And this is the problem with a hero like Frankro nowadays, right? With so much aggression coming in from most teams and so much mobility to be able to move around the map together, you usually want to make sure your role, or at least your main form of setup, has AOE to be able to deal with it. And but Franco just does not provide that. Valoisky, he got a good hook into the tower, but then Nivor just does the same on multiple members instead. Oh, what a save coming from Light here. Can they get Nivor in time? No, they cannot. And one good hook is all they need. And Valoisky is able to find one before this third turtle. 5 v 4 No demo dominance descent so far from the side of Geek Fan, but they do have the Nightmare spawn. Do they secure the turtle once more? Yes, they do. Gobs throwing his body to the back lines. He wants to finish Ooh. off Iran, and they find Iran again. And another hook from Aloisky! What a hook by Geek Fam! And in one fell swoop, they get not one, not two, but three heroes, as well as the turtle from the side of Geek, Geek Fam.
I think this series is demonstrating that Geek Fam are the masters of disruption in MLBB. They're so good at getting in your head, getting under your skin. RG, they seemed like they had control of the turtle there, but Valoisky is just throwing out hooks left and right, actually picking people off. And Gobs, this Masha really came out of left field for them. RG was not prepared to deal with this sort of damage. Lance should be able to escape from most things, but not from that thunderclap. You know, expect the unexpected, right? Like, after this turtle fight here, usually you kind of back off and play a little bit safe, but look at how Gobbs was just in the face of Yuran, making sure that he cannot steal anything. But another beautiful hook from Boloisky is just so annoying to work with because technically, again, common sense says that you take the turtle, we're too far off, we got, uh, I would say, Gobbs out to safety, we should back off. No! GeekFam just says, you know what, I'm just gonna... Whee! Uh, where's the oh, hold oh, on, diversion, diversion. a big they one. Back lines, Gadera, he needs to make a run for it, Mo, but they don't get the kill on towards him as well. Boloisky getting stunned away by the yin yang reactions here. He is gonna be the first to fall, but at the same time, the D Dominus Descent comes in, but it's not enough damage to punish this. So that's gonna be a good jump from our LGPH, but look at this, Ooh. he run! He finds our boy without his spell. He goes in for the dive, he executes him, and that's gonna be two for nothing. Meanwhile, Gobs is looking for Iran. Do they go for this? They don't have the numbers here. Well, Loisky just spawned, but they are gonna lose a tier two for now. I think that's fine for Geek Fam. It is acceptable losses considering Loisky. everything. Loisky. Hold on, Gobs uh -oh. is actually still waiting back there. Could He's find something, maybe, but I think he wants Irad, <laughs> ideally. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough year, but Gobs, he gets pulled back into this fight. He's got the help, but here comes the hook to catch onto his light. He is gonna get first to down here. Gobs flickers away. He's gonna eventually fall to Aqua, but Geek Fam, they force a fight when you least expect it. They go for one for one. But RGPH, they're getting very spot for this oh. year. No, they're going for the fight as well. They go in behind and they find one. Our boy comes out of the, the, the spawn link and he will fall as well. And Geek Fam, they lose the tempo. Oh, Here the comes hook. the hook from Boloisky, but was it worth it? Because RSGPH just got so much damage from Aqua. Ah, Geekman really just what? needs a harder front line here, which is surprising when they have Franco and Baxia, but they're really not surviving long enough due to the AoE damage coming out of Aqua. Despite the strong hooks from Baloisky, Geek Fam are having difficulty truly following up, especially when their team has been split apart. They need to make sure they're the ones dictating the tempo. And it is turning out that this game is a lot closer than we would have initially predicted. Oh boy, this is smart. Finally, RSGPH finally holds in their composure and choose when and where they want to fight. Wait for those outs up on our boy. Once he gets out, goes to the back lines and go in for the fight. In this case, now they're committing on towards Gobs. King Fam says, we're sick of you right now. And RGP is just takes him out of the equation. Geek Fam just could not respond in time. Yeah, there's a Loy Yi proving to be a lot bigger of an issue here. Abstract asked earlier, is global presence a thing? I think it might be. Oh my goodness, Maloyski getting completely shredded by Aqua here. 10, 2, and 5. They are going to be scrambling to pieces here. RSGPH continues their assault, diving to back towards the crystal as well. They get everyone. Our boy left to defend here. Gok finally reveals himself, but Aqua once more kills him off. Divergent, can they get out to safety? Yes, they can. Gobs now, 1v1 Nibor. He gets the kill, but the damage has been done. The damage has been done on towards the basis of Geek Fam. The crystal now exposed. RSG Philippines heavily in the advantage in terms of structures surviving. And we can see that the lack of AOE CC or even damage from Geek Fam is really hurting them because RSG feel completely safe to just mass diversion right in front of them because they know there is nothing Geek Fam can do to actually punish. Oh boy, this is just a back and fro game so far. Geek Fam somehow still manages to defend, but the, again, the damage has been done. They still have a little bit of hope here, but it's only a 5k network difference. So it's not that big of a difference now as the game progresses slow, uh, slowly into the later stage of the game. So it all comes down to that one big hook, or in this case, can they deal with those divergent plays from Aqua because he is playing out of his mind this game. 
Oh, speaking of, there it is once again. They're looking for Kadera. Oh, no. Concealed plays. Can they get him as well? No. They are going to try and buy a little bit more time. Because we're able to find Kuze. They turn the tides. Double kill for them. And they're looking for a triple. They made the mistake. They have learned. And Gobs gets the triple. And now RSG, they have to run for their lives. Kadera looking to try and catch this off. But the tier one still stands. They will be able to get out to safety. Gig Fam will only have to settle with three with 15 seconds left on the Lord. They need to get even more. They're stealing resources away from RGBH. But again, was this all worth it? Because RSG, they're going to be responding in three for seconds. More. I'm offended. Comes in. They extend the fight. Iran, you cannot die here. They kill Gobs. But does he survive? No, he does not. He loses his life. But GeekFam says it's enough. We have to leave. Aqua is back online. Divergent comes in. We need to reset this. Can they get out to safety? Vincent? He's in trouble. Our boy walking back to his base as well. Boloyski gets completely stranded here. He is going to fall to buy time for the rest of the members to come back online. And this is not looking good for GeekFab. They overstate their stay. I have to say, all of that started in the fight outside of Kiksan's base by Valoisky having a flicker bloody hunt into Winter's Crown. So there was no way for him to be CC'd out of the bloody hunt, thereby holding Kusi down until he could be finished off. A very nice interaction there from the newly revamped item. Geekfam now going to be oh. returning to contest the Lord. Diversion going to be scouted out here. Oh, no comes way. Hirat, he needs to get out. Gops, he, he is on the second bar as well. Two, one and a half bar for the Lord. Do they get the reset? Yes, they do. So Geekfam is able to hold on. But again, RSGPH, they need to catch Kadera and our boy. He's come to the 50-50. Iran wins it. And now... They are going to go in for an all-out brawl. Nibor first to fall, and GigFam looking for a little bit more. Iran needs to run. He needs to back off. They cannot bleed a little bit too much here. Kadera takes a little bit too much damage. Ooh. He sidesteps the Phantom Execution. Poloiski with the flicker who does not connect. And GigFam says, okay, enough. Too much. Too much action for this one game. Too we much. are seeing an incredible exchange of blows from RSG Philippines and GeekFam right now. Neither team willing to give an inch. And GeekFam showing that they are truly contenders uh -oh. despite a weaker early game presence. Okay, here he comes. Three of them so far, 3v5. The rest of the teams are grouping up slowly here. The Nightmare spawn is slowly delaying the Lord push, but Gig Fam, they have to clear it out quickly here. Aqua, three man cash coming in as well. The Nightmare spawn is going to be outside to buy a little bit of time to zone them out. And because of this, they will be able to safely defend against this Lord. Meanwhile, next tier three assault coming in. RSGPH, do they commit? It seems like they can't really do too much here. They have to clear the minions. RSGPH will take it out. Hope doesn't connect for Boloiski. That means RSGPH is coming in. Gig fan waiting for the right moment. The hook once more does not connect. Yeah, this is a very tense situation right now. RSG looking to get every single inhibitor. Oh! oh! A big catch coming in from the Ruby here as well. Gig fan they're taking so much damage. They completely crumble. Vincent also falling. Three 2v5 against the wall. Kadera is trying his best, but it's going to be a little bit too much here. Crystal is going to fall. RSGMPH hammers their way through, and they take the Crystal, dragging this into game number three. A truly valiant effort here from Geek Fam, but some mistakes in positioning, being caught out. Nibor finding the ideal opportunities over and over again. 